Hey guys, Budo Jake here, I'm with my good friend Jack Topher. Jack is a student of Dave Kama and a real student of the game. He studies a lot of Hickson's material and he's here to share with you some special techniques. This is going to be a five part series. Yeah, but before we get into it, Jack, tell us the reason that we're filming this. Um, well, last year my sister was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. It's estrogen receptive. They're doing the treatments at the can. Um, she has a five year old nephew, or a five year old son, my nephew, Kieran and I'm doing whatever I can to just secure his future as best as I can possible. So we're doing a GoFundMe, BJJ vs. Cancer. I'd like to raise $5,000 for him, and uh, I'm gonna share some techniques with you. Yeah, I know you've gone through a lot of effort to learn these techniques. I've known you for a long time. You're always going up to train with, at Hickson's and, and different uh, people's dojos, so uh, we appreciate you sharing this information with us. Thank you. So for week one, what are we gonna do? Well, I wanna do, um, a series of sequences, one that will build off the other one. So for week one, I'm gonna start with posture. And then from my posture and someone's guard, a pass that I use that works gi and no gi. And then uh, some common situations that a person in the guard is gonna present with me, how to defend against it and improve your situation. Okay, so we're gonna start with posture in the guard, right? Yep. Okay, let's Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. Okay. okay, so for the first technique, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show proper posture in the guard. This is kind of an invisible jujitsu technique. It uh, looks easier than it is to do it until you actually learn it. But um, Jake's job in having me in his guard is to break my posture down. He wants to pull me down and get me like this. He can choke me at this point um, in my fight and I'm trying to get away from him, get up, I might expose myself to arm bars, etc. So the mistake that most people make while being in the guard is they use their arms to keep them up, touching his chest, controlling his body with the arms. Um, this is easy to defeat because he can, it will have what's your typical pass or a typical breakdown. Usually I'll flare the elbow and bring my knees to my chest to break your posture. Exactly. So the reason that works for him is because I'm reliant on my arms. If I can engage my body correctly and stay up, I actually don't need to use my arms. So go ahead and break my posture. Okay. Now the most amount of force that he can generate to pull me down is as much as his upper body weighs. Right? You can't, um, no matter how strong your legs are, if I'm up here, you're gonna end up doing a sit up. So you're gonna know if you're gonna do this, tech, if you're doing the technique right, because the guy should be able to do a sit up and I'm not gonna budge. Okay? Like that. He should be able to grab my gi there with as much force as he can generate, like that, and I should be able to stay up. The beauty of having this correctly is I can now pass and force a game as opposed to fighting with my hands to stay up. So I just use my hips and like that. And I'll explain exactly what I'm doing, okay? Don't mind if you take these off. Okay, so this technique, what you wanna do is, you don't want your legs really wide on the guy because it gives him too much hip play and he can start creating angles and start doing stuff. So what I wanna do with my knees is I wanna narrow them in and just kinda keep his hips controlled here. Okay, the second thing I need to do, and this is actually the most important part, is instead of having my, my, my hips rotated out like that, I actually wanna rotate them in like this quite a bit. This alone, when you're in somebody's guard and you rotate your hips, you'll start to feel very stable. Second from that is you need to get upright. So your hips are forward like this and you're upright. At this point in time, he won't be able to pull me down. So let's cover it really quick. Okay, so knees, control his hips. You're pinching my, my hips right here. Yep, and not too much pressure, but just enough. Move your hips around, got you under control. Yep. Okay, my butt is tucked forward, my hips are rotated in. My upper body's up. I only need my hands actually to stop you from coming up. Now, some people um, might think that extending your arm fully in someone's guard is a problem. And I'll just say, go ahead and arm bar me. He's got nothing. He can't even start an arm bar because my posture is good. So hips are rotated forward, sitting upright. These, I use my hands to prevent him from coming up, okay? Next week, what we'll do is we're gonna go from the pass that I do right from the same situation. And Jack, I think it's important to talk about the toes too, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times in different passes, you wanna be on active toes, have the people call it active toes up like this. If you have your toes active in this position, you're, you're leaning too far forward and you will get your posture broken down. So you do wanna be flat footed, 
hips like this and knees pinching. There's one other detail that actually helps quite a bit. And this, this is pertinent to um, someone who has longer legs. If I'm close to his hips, meaning my hips are close to his hips this way, it's not very much pressure on his ankles back here. So um, do a sit up. Does that feel very much pressure there? No. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Here, if I'm back further, now do a sit up. Now I feel more pressure. Much more pressure, right? Mm -hmm. So what other detail about this position? Um, people have different leg length and um, this is gonna make a big difference in your posture in that guard. If my body is up close to his, there's actually not gonna be very much pressure on his own ankles when he tries to break my posture. So do you feel much pressure on your ankles? No, I feel space in between your back and my ankles. Yeah, exactly. And um, it helps me if he's heavier, if I can get back towards his ankles more, still applying the same principles, I'm gonna control his hips, I have more space here, he already feels this pressure right now. Let's go ahead and do a sit up. It's really difficult and your feet wanna pop right now, right? Yep. So that's a very important detail and it's actually gonna come in handy for when we go over the, the pass next week. So when you're in someone's guard, you're always gonna scoot back a little bit? Yeah, if you, if you can in the, the whole uh, game of things. Um, I usually first and foremost just try to get posture and stay up and get my position solid because that way I'm not, never uh, being threatened. But um, in doing that, sometimes you can work yourself back when you get back towards the feet. And it's particularly important with people with really long legs because it's easier for them to break you down unless you get that, that distance and that gap there. And then it's really easy for you to stay up and then it also puts a lot of pressure on their ankles. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so uh, wanna give them a little teaser for next week? Absolutely, I'm gonna show you a, a pass that I use from this and it works gi, no gi. Very simply, I'm gonna end up popping here, getting a pass, and get my side control. And there's a few variations that I'll show you about that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Thank you. And don't forget, gofundme.com slash BJJVSCancer if you'd like to donate to Jack's nephew's cause. Thank you, guys. Thank you.